In most of my videos, I talk about techniques that I would recommend to anyone, yet this time I'm going to share a technique that I don't actually recommend because it's just too weird and too specific. It breaks too many rules. Paradoxically, this is something that I use almost every day. One of the most useful tricks that I have in my repertoire, but that I wouldn't really suggest to anyone. What kind of tutorial is that? Then you might ask, why would anyone be interested? Well, let's just say that it's going to be a lesson on ignoring lessons. Through this technique of mine, we're going to talk about going your own way and ultimately finding your own process. As a beginner, you first learn all the rules. As a master, you perfect them. But as a true artist, you transgress them. I can explain all the techniques in the world to you. They only count if you can make them yours and integrate them to your unique vision. I'm sure you have a very unique technique in your repertoire as well, a quirk that you came up with that you never saw anywhere else. So let me know in the comments. Let me first explain my very quirky technique. Here it is. I take myself as a model and change the features of the face to create new characters. This way I don't have to get models. See, I rarely have models to pose for me. If I have the opportunity, I'd gladly work with a model or two, but most of the time for me is just too inconvenient because I make paintings with lots of characters, so it wouldn't be very uh, practical, it would be very expensive to pay for that many models all the time, and I don't have enough friends that are okay to sit for me every day. And even with photos, I change my mind all the time in the middle of a painting, and it would require me to ask my models to come back every time for new poses. It's just too much trouble. Not even mentioning that I often find ideas for new compositions in the middle of the night. I used to try organizing my work schedule with models, but it was so much logistics that I could never get a painting going. Having one model is one thing, but having eight is a completely different story. So one day I decided that it was better to just get started than wait for a model to arrive and I took the decision to use a camera with a timer and take the pose myself for all the characters. For me it's better than making it purely out of my imagination. I can't invent all the folds in a drapery for example. I can't recreate accurate lighting out of my head so I need a model but I only need my model to work like some sort of mannequin. I know enough of the art of portraiture to transform a face if needed. So that's how I usually proceed when I don't have a model. I use my own body, my own face. I take the pose myself and I transform it based on what kind of character I want to represent. I know it's very weird, but I don't mind that my characters aren't real people, they're like actors in a play for me. They all play a role in the story that I want to put in my painting. It's not meant to be realistic, it's very artificial, exactly like theater. The characters in my paintings are like actors, and if actors can fake emotions for the sake of a story, and nobody seems to find anything to say about that, I can also, as a painter, fake a body and a face, it's pretty much the same. Now, obviously, all of this is very specific to my vision of art, because I consider that my approach is almost baroque in its essence, so I don't mind this type of obvious staging. I don't mind this artificial approach, because what I'm going for is impact and dynamism. I don't care about naturalism or realism. I want something that goes beyond realistic. I want striking emotions. I want a captivating story. I want old people, young people, female characters of all origins, children. I just need actors <laughs> to populate my stories. So I invent them. And that's what writers do. Most characters only exist for the sake of the story, and I do exactly the same for my paintings. I use myself as some sort of mannequin, and I invent people that don't exist based on the pure form of my body. I just use my face for an example of how the light hits the surface, and that's it. 
I change the nose, the hair color, the hair type, the lips, the shape of the face, just like, you know, in a video game, a character generator. And obviously this takes a lot of <laughs> very specific and quirky skills, but in general, it takes a good ability to paint portraits from an actual model first. So I had to go through that before. And also a very clear understanding of the structure of the face and what makes a person look like they do. It takes a strange combination of face structure study and observation, something that frankly I'm not really sure how I make it work, but that's why I can't really teach that. It's not really a skill that I learned, it's more a combination of skills. That's why in my teachings, I try to avoid saying, yeah, just do what I do, because I know that it only works up until a certain point. My educational content, my painting courses, everything that I teach is founded on the idea of teaching a multitude of options so that each artist can come up with their unique process, specifically tailored to their vision. And this technique of mine is not really something I think you should be doing. However, I think that every artist needs to have a secret recipe of their own, a quirky combination of skills that they use in unusual ways, thinking outside the box. As an artist, it can be challenging to break away from established rules and find your unique style. It's so comfortable to see what other artists are doing and just imitate. But one of the most important thing you can do is break away from this habit. You can only create your own style and become the artist you truly are if you see beyond the established rules. As a beginner, you first learn all the rules. As a master, you perfect them. And as a true artist, you transgress them. The process of becoming an artist involves a progression from learning the foundational rules of art to mastering them and finally to breaking them in order to create something truly original and unique. Learning the rules of art is an important first step for any beginner. This involves studying, uh, studying a lot, the principles of you know, color theory, composition, form, other basic elements of art. As you'll gain experience, you'll become more skilled at using these rules to create works of art that are technically proficient and aesthetically pleasing. Once you have mastered these rules, you can begin to experiment and explore new possibilities. This may involve pushing the boundaries of traditional techniques, combining unexpected materials or creating works that challenge traditional ideas about how art should be made, how you were taught how to paint. That's how art has always evolved, by mastering and transgressing the rules. The Renaissance was a transgression from the previous era. The Baroque was a transgression from the classical Renaissance and so on and so forth. Recently though, modern art with the concept of tabula rasa has led us to believe that all rules should be wiped out. But I believe that it was a mistake that actually plunged the art of our time into obscurity and alienated people from it. Modern art and contemporary art, let's face it, is pretty unpopular with people who are not a part of you know, a cultural elite. And it's sad, but it's mainly due to the idea that yeah, there are no rules, that whatever works, that it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you say that it's art, that makes it art. All rules obviously can be transgressed, but they need to be mastered first. Now, it's maybe time to transgress the, you know, the modernist rule that there are no rules. A true artist can create works that are truly original and unique, but creating out of thin air is just vacuous. Why not use the knowledge of your predecessors? It's already there. It's there to be used. Making art requires a deep understanding of the principles of art, a respect for the tradition, as well as the courage and creativity to push beyond what is considered traditional. However, it's important to note that the process of transgressing the rules does not mean abandoning them altogether. Instead, it involves 
building on the foundational principles of art while adding your own personal touch and unique vision to create something that is truly your own. In conclusion, the idea that beginners artists learn the rules, masters perfect them, and true artists actually transgress them is a useful framework, in my opinion, if you want to understand the creative process. By understanding the principles of art and then experimenting and pushing beyond them, artists can create truly original works that capture their unique perspective and then pushes the art forward as a sort of a giant vision that goes from tradition to modernity. How you break the rules is yours to decide, it's your vision. It just has to feel right. When you feel that all the principles and lessons from the past are just restricting your creativity, start seeing beyond them. Embrace imperfection. Don't be afraid to make mistakes or create imperfect art. And also take risks. Don't be afraid to try something new. It might not work, but it might make a difference and be your actual true art. This is how you can break away from established rules and create something truly unique. If you want to watch another video related to finding your style, you can click here or here, I don't know. A huge thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. If you want to join the community, you'll find the link in the description below. You'll also find the links to both my courses, my oil painting course and my cutter course. All right, that's it for today. And as always, joy and inspiration to you. Bye.